2D, hotbed of creativity. When you think about it, 2D is like, this is where gaming began. And it's amazing to see games innovating and pushing, games like Sundred and Hollow Knight and Cuphead. And we have a bunch of new 2D features, which we're going to unlock even more for you, and we're going to show you that now, too. For the past couple of years, we've been hard at work on the 2D foundational features at Unity. This is an important area of focus for us. Even though we want to work on the high-level features, we want to make sure that they are built on top of a strong foundation. Now, we're really excited that this year we've completed a lot of that work and we're about to release the first of our 2D layout tools. This is Tilemap, which we're releasing with 2017.2. Now, this is a tool for building grid-based layouts in Unity. I feel really strongly about this tool because it's going to empower artists and designers to express themselves and to literally paint directly in Unity. And we're really happy to see that some studios have started using Tilemap to create new and innovative experiences for their players. Please welcome Russ Scammell. Hi, Russ. Hi, Adam. How's it going? It's going well. Good. Good to see you. Awesome. Hi, everyone. <laughs> it's been an awesome year for 2D at Unity. With 2017.2, we're proud to introduce Tilemap. Now, this is a tool for designing games that need a grid-based layout. Now, earlier this year, we released many other 2D features as well, other two, uh, important 2D features, like the Sprite Atlas asset and the Sprite Mask component. We also released sorting groups and axis distance sort. This is really important for those of you who are trying to deal with the tricky problem of sorting in 2D games. Also new with 2017.2, Cinemachine for 2D. With a number of new features, this makes a really powerful 2D camera system right in Unity. Now, we're going to take a look at these features in action using assets from a game by Epic House Studios. Now, Phased was one of the first games that was built on our new Talmap feature. This unique Made with Unity title makes creative use of pixel art and glitch effects to tell the story of a girl who wakes up to find that she has the power to twist reality. Take a look at the art direction, the way they've embraced the really like pixelated, vintage sort of throwback uh, art style, but then they've added modern aspects to it, like uh, chromatic aberration and some distortion buffers to re reinforce uh, bits of the gameplay. We'd like to thank the awesome Epic House team for letting us use their assets. And now I'm going to build a level from Phased in Tilemap. OK. So Tilemap has this really smooth workflow that allows me to import my images that I've been designing in my art authoring tool directly into Unity. And I can just drag them into, they come in as sprites, and I just drag them into the tile palette, and I get tiles. And these tiles are now ready to be painted on a tile map in the scene. So I'm going to take a look at one of these uh, tile maps. The first one I'm going to paint is I'm going to start by painting the walls of the level. And I'm going to use what we call a custom tile for this. Now, a custom tile, let's click on it here. A custom tile here is a rule tile. This is the example. And it allows designers to create relationships between neighboring tiles so that you can paint the appropriate tile based on these relationships. In other words, if you want to make automatic corners and edges and things like this. OK? OK, so I'm going to start by painting this tile map onto the scene. So I'm just picking it here with a uh, paintbrush. And we're just painting directly in the scene. So that's pretty cool. You can see there's automatic corners coming in. But I want to work a bit faster, so I'm going to use a box fill. There we are. Uh, let's go a little bit faster here and then make the rest of the level. There we go. OK. Now, you can make your own custom tiles. This is one of them. And you do this by extending the tile class. But of course, we want to get you up and running quickly. So we've provided a set of custom tiles and brushes as part of our 2D extras package. Now, I want to make this wall more colorful. Um, I'm thinking maybe some posters. 
Now, this scene has been set up with multiple tile maps, so I can create a layering effect. So I'm going to start with one layer of posters here. I'm going to grab these and start painting them here in the scene. And then I'm going to grab another group of posters, and I'm going to put those in front of these. Just zoom in a bit here. And then I want some furniture. So I've got another tile map for that. And I'm going to come here and get a bed, put that down, and then put down some bedside tables. Here we go. And then maybe a room divider over here to make this uh, scene complete. I'll probably need a door. Otherwise, the main character is going to be stuck in this level forever. So there we go. We've got an exit. OK, great. Now, you can add normal interactive game objects into your scene as well. They're just going to play well with the uh, multiple layers of tile maps. They're just going to blend seamlessly. Um, here, we're going to look at a, a couple of those. So here, I've got some props. Uh, if I zoom in here, we can see a, a fan and an alarm clock. And these are just game objects right, with colliders. And you can sort these with the layers in the tile map using sorting groups and sorting layers, and of course, your order in layer. OK. Now, I'd like to add a collider to the walls tile map, because otherwise, when I put my player in the scene, she's just going to fall straight through the floor. right? And alongside this, alongside the tile map, we have the tile map collider. So I'm going to select a walls tile map here, and I'm going to turn on the tile map collider 2D. OK, and just like that, we have collision that is derived from the physics shape of the sprites that we use in that tile map. And this plays well with the composite collider. If I turn that on, you can see now we have a more optimized collision shape. And that's going to work better in okay, your games. Russ, you yes. know artists are always changing their minds. Yeah. And this level will go through iterations, and they're going to want to move things around. Of course, right? And game design is this fluid process. So this is a flexible system to support that. So let's go back to the walls tile map and make a few changes. I've decided I want a slightly higher, I want a slightly higher ceiling here. So I'm going to come in here and start changing that. And we can see the tile map collider just adapts. Awesome. Yeah. What's up, dude? OK. So now let's, uh, I think we're going to put a player in this scene. Let's grab a player. OK, let's see a scene with a player in it. And I'm going to hit play on this. Keep in mind, this player is, again, just a game object, nothing special. Of course, some scripts to help her run around. And I'm going to hit play. And now we're just running around in the scene. And as we can see, the colliders are working just fine. Great. OK, now let's take a look at a larger level. Let's open up the uh, main town. This is the main town from, um, from Phased. I'm going to hit play on this. Now, it's a really interesting level, and I'd like to explore it a bit more. But um, I'll probably need a follow cam to help me get around, right? So I can see what I'm doing. Let's make some cameras. OK. So with Cinema Machine 2D, you install Cinema Machine off the Asset Store. It shows up right here. We've got a new camera. It's a new class of cameras called 2D. Bam, you throw it in your project. OK, so we'd like to follow the player. So let's drag the player and throw it into follow. Great. Now we're following the player. So you might have noticed from the previous demo these guides, the compositional guides. So they work the same way here, too. So you can say where you'd like to compose the player. Now let's go into play mode and tune some cameras. Hang on a sec, Adam. You're in play mode, and you're going to tune settings. You're going to change things in play mode. Yeah, because as so many of you know, when you're tuning cameras, you need to be in the game to tune them. Like, I need to see what's going to happen when I run up here. Let's zoom in a little bit more. He's too small. And what happens when we go up these steps? You want to tune and create this stuff on the fly, because you need to see it in context. So we've got this little button right here. See this? Save during play. So all the camera work that you do, you save in play mode. So if we want to change this guide a little bit, if we want to zoom in, this becomes our gameplay camera. You can see we've got a little bit of lag. I can actually turn that down. OK, so that's OK. We've got this one base camera. 
Now, it's really nice to have the cameras reinforce gameplay. So what's something that happens in this game? What, what do we come up to that we can do okay. a camera yep. something with? If you go to the left, there's a stack of TVs, if you just keep walking. Okay. And um, what I've done there is I've set up a point of interest camera, because yeah. a, doi uh, a dialogue box shows up and tells you a little bit about your, your mission. So. Does it appear? Here it is. You OK there? Yeah. <laughs> OK. So when you get the stack of TVs, we're going to zoom in on the uh, point of interest with the camera. OK. So what happens here is we go into this point of interest, and we just turn on another camera. The composition's not that great. Like, look, we're cutting the text off. Yeah, we want to. OK, that's much better. So let's fix that. And blending between different camera properties is as easy as just turning cameras on in your scene. And you can define how they blend to each other and how they blend back. And you can populate your 2D worlds with multiple different camera behaviors to, to reinforce gameplay of whatever's happening in the level. So there we go. That quickly. That's really cool. So, and this never ceases to amaze me, but like, look how small little differences in gameplay cameras can really reinforce and really make the experience better. I mean, in a way, it's all about the details, right, Adam? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I'm really excited about Tile Map. Artists and designers are going to be using these custom tiles and brushes to create amazing things, to paint and express themselves right in Unity. Yeah, absolutely. And with Cinemachine 2D, you can spend your time creating cameras and not writing code. With 2017.2, Unity has a great end-to-end -end solution for 2D games. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank you.